The blasto everyone, welcome to what if Issei teleported to Ben 10 Alien Force and had Omnitrix Part 3. This is the continuation of what if Issei teleported to Ben 10. Before we start please go support Photon DX10 for writing that awesome fanfic, now let's begin. Issei's aliens. Issei's red Omnitrix before being recalibrated. After recalibrating. 1. Wildveen. 2. Heatlist. 3. Diamond Head. 4. Stinkfly I'll use your reboot design for personal taste. 5. Fowrams. 6. Frankenstrick. 7. XLR8. 8. Arctiguana. 9. Wildmut. 10. Alien X. Ends Aliens. Ends Omnitrix before being recalibrated. After recalibrating. 1. Goop. 2. Muddy. 3. Chromastone. 4. Big Chill. 5. Human Gaussor. 6. Brainstorm. 7. Jet Ray. 8. Spider Monkey. 9. Eco Echo. 10. Alien X. Chapter 00. Reunion of two heroes Issei returns to the world of Ben 10. POV Issei. One month has passed since Azazel's gamer helmet incident and during that time I had to resume my life as a Kuo Academy student and as Ria's Gremory's pawn boyfriend. Fortunately, my parents never found out that I was hit by lightning and that my mind ended up transported inside a video game and I had to wear the Omnitrix to fight Vilgax and especially Raynor to get back home. I saved the world and I said goodbye to the Tennyson family, especially Ben who became my best friend being in his world, but I know that one day we will see each other again. Well, enough recapping the past, it's time for you to enjoy my life as a high school student, if it were that easy, of course. It was already Friday and I was leaving class and heading home to play video games in my gaming room to relieve myself from the stress of daily life. Fortunately, Riaz and the others don't know that the gamer helmet is buried in the garden of my house and that only I have the map to know where it was buried. Just when I was going to open the door of my house, my phone rang and I recognized it. The him who calls. Azazel. They say. Tell me, Azazel, what do you want and what's happening? I asked. Azazel Mobile, Issei, bring the gamer helmet that you have buried in your house and take it to the occult club, it's important. Azazel said. Issei. Wait a minute, how do you know that the gamer helmet is buried in my house? I asked but he hung up and I went to the shed to get a shovel and the map to know the exact area where the gamer helmet was buried. I found the exact area and I started digging, and it took me 10 minutes to dig up the box with the gamer helmet, I opened it and took the gamer helmet out of the box. The helmet was intact and no one except me found it before. Now I just need to take him to Azazel's apartment and take him unnoticed without the girls in my harem finding out, until I bumped into Zenovia. Zenovia. Issei, look where you're going is that the gamer helmet? Zenovia asked in shock when she saw that she had the gamer helmet. Issei. Zenovia, it's not what it seems I said to the blue-haired girl, trying to clarify the misunderstanding. Zenovia. How is it not what it seems, and that shovel you used to dig up the box where you kept the helmet behind our backs? I'm not stupid, Issei, I have eyes on my face to see that you hadn't destroyed the cause of last month's problem, said Zenovia reminding me what happened one month ago when I was hit by lightning, and my mind ended up in Ben, 10 protector of earth, Issei. I was just going to take the gamer helmet with Azazel to the occult club and then come home to play video games to let off steam on the weekend, and besides, I learned my lesson from last time. I said to the blue-haired girl. Zenovia. If so, okay, but I'll go with you to be safe. Zenovia said and she accompanied me to the occult club and we saw that Azazel was in the room where Riaz had Gasper locked up. Azazel. Issei, you've arrived just in time and I don't remember inviting Zenovia to see my secret project. Azazel said when he saw that Zenovia was accompanying me. Issei. Sorry, Zenovia saw me dig up the gamer helmet from my garden and accompanied me to make sure I wasn't lying. I said to Azazel. Zenovia, yes and now I see that you were telling the truth, sorry Issei. Zenovia said. Azazel. Well, getting back to the topic, can you give me the gamer helmet, Issei. Azazel asked and I gave him the gamer helmet. Issei. And why do you need the gamer helmet? And what is that behind the curtain? I asked. Azazel. Wait until tomorrow and I'll tell you so you can go see it. Azazel said and Zenovia and I went back home. Azazel. You can leave, they're already gone. Azazel said and behind him a man with black hair and a lab coat appeared and on his neck he was wearing protective glasses. It was Professor Paradox. Paradox. You did well to keep your new invention a surprise for the Sekiryute, Azazel. Paradox said. Azazel. Don't change the subject, Paradox, how could you do something like that? Have Issei get hit by lightning and end up transported to the world of the Omnitrix wielder? Azazel asked. Paradox. Serzich has told me the same thing, and it was necessary to save both worlds from Vilgax, but at Asmuth's request, I must not say anything about the future that awaits him and Ben Tennyson. Paradox said and went back to Ben's world. Azazel. You better. Azazel said and went back to work on his invention. 
When I returned home, I saw that the girls were setting the table for dinner, and I started to help them. Ria's and Akeno were cooking, Asia and Irina were putting the cutlery, and I noticed that Kaneko and Ravel weren't there. Ross was told me that Kaneko and Ravel were in the gaming room, and I went down there with Zenobia, and we saw that the girls were playing Just Dance. And I saw that Ravel had won and the two of them turned around and saw me. Ravel. Issei, where have you been? Ravel asked. Issei. Zenobia and I were running an errand for Azazel, and that's why it took us so long, sorry. I said to the girls, not mentioning the part of the gamer helmet. Kaneko. Well, there are still 15 minutes left before we go to dinner, we have two extra controllers so you can play, if you want, of course. Kaneko asked and we nodded so we could play, and Zenobia chose the song. After the song, we saw that Ravel won again, I had second place, Kaneko had third place, and Zenobia had last place. I congratulated Ravel, and then Roswis came and told us to go up to dinner without first turning off the console. After dinner, we went to bed and slept without first having Rhea's huge opace in my face, and I fell asleep like a rock. The next day, I woke up and received a message from Azazel and he told me to go to the occult club that he invented it was already finished and to go whenever he wants. I got up, showered and dressed and went down to breakfast and went to the occult club where Azazel was behind a curtain. Azazel. I'm glad you've arrived, Issei, my new invention is ready for use. Azazel said. Issei. And what's behind that curtain? I asked Azazel. Azazel. Issei, let me introduce you to my new invention. The multiversal gate Azazel said and he showed me a giant circular machine, and I saw that the gamer helmet is used as a battery for this new invention. Issei. From its name, that machine can travel through several worlds of the multiverse or something like that. I said. Azazel. Yes, and I have brought you here so that you can be the first to travel through various worlds of the multiverse said Azazel and I'm not very sure that this device works well, knowing that most of Azazel's inventions end up working poorly and have catastrophic results for the person who uses them. Then. Oh no, I refuse to be your guinea pig again for another one of your experiments that end badly. I said, remembering the events of the gamer helmet last time. Azazel. Don't worry, this failure will not happen again, and with the gamer helmet used as a battery, there will be no more problems because Azazel said, but I interrupted him since it takes him hours to finish his explanation. Say, In other words, this thing won't send me to strange places, because you'll be setting the coordinates of the dimension I'm going to, right? I asked, unexcited. Azazel. Yes, well, get on the platform that we've already wasted valuable time with our talk, and tuck the harness into your waist, so I can bring you back when I can. Azazel said and I put on the safety harness so that he can send me back home when possible, and I stood on the platform, and the machine was activated projecting a portal. I walked through the portal and felt like I was in a science fiction movie, and that I could go to any world there was. Back with Azazel, I was sitting in the chair that operated the multiversal gate computer, and just when I was going to give the data to the world that I was going to explore, the coffee cup fell on the computer, and sparks came out from the short circuit, and the machine got damaged because of that and Azazel panicked, and I was going to pull the harness that would send me back, but the machine exploded and the harness rope cut and I ended up wandering the ends of the multiverse, and after what seemed like one hour I ended up falling from the other side of the portal from the sky and I ended up falling onto a mailbox, destroying it in the process. I hope I don't have to pay for it, because I left my wallet at home. They say. My invention won't fail, he said, but I have improved them, he said nothing bad is going to happen, he said this is the last time I end up in this type of situation because of you, as is all I said, and I saw a person come out that I would never believe I would see again. Ben at 15 years old and in his Ben 10 alien force outfit, Ben came running towards me, and I saw that he wasn't carrying his Omnitrix on his wrist, maybe because of the malware incident destroying feedback because of me. Ben. Hey, you're okay, aren't you Issei? Ben asked, surprised to see me after five years, that in my world a single month has passed since the gamer helmet thing. Issei. Damn, Azazel, why do almost all your inventions end Ben? I said when I saw my best friend, already a teenager and almost my age. Do heroes reunite after a long time, and a dangerous adventure awaits them to save the multiverse from a new threat, a new team will be formed with old allies and old enemies. This adventure will begin in Chapter 01. Chapter 01. The return of two heroes reunions from the past first part, POVSA. I can't believe it, Ben is 15 years old, and according to that I'm in the first episode of Ben 10 Alien Force during the first season, and apparently Ben was going to see Gwen during her karate classes. Ben. Issei, incredible, you're back and you haven't changed anything I'm really glad to see you after five years, friend. Ben said and picked me up and hugged me. Issei. Well, in my world only one month passed, apparently the timeline between your world and mine is not the same, but what does it matter? How have you been doing in the last five years? 
Ben asked and he told me that he used feedback well but out of guilt for overusing it too much and for ignoring Asmuth that he would have difficulty using his other alien forms. Malware took him out of the Omnitrix and destroyed him and I blamed myself for that seriously. If I had stayed in Ben's world and intervened before Malware destroyed feedback, none of this would have happened. Ben. It wasn't your fault, Issei, I should have listened to Gwen, and that's why I lost feedback, none of this was your fault. Ben said, comforting me that it wasn't my fault that malware destroyed feedback. Issei, well, what are you telling me, Ben? I asked Ben and he showed me a message from Max that there is alien activity again on Earth, and that he has my Omnitrix and Ben's, something that is not true, because Ben has both his and mine in the pocket of his jacket. Ben. Grandpa Max doesn't have our Omnitrix, I had them hidden inside a box in my closet, what does he want to tell us with that? Ben asked. Issei. I don't know, but we'd better go see Gwen so she can help us with this. I suggested to Ben and he agreed that it was a good idea, and I went in front of him until I stopped. Issei. You know, Ben, why don't you go ahead since I have no idea where the Bellwood Sports Center is. I said and Ben went ahead and we took the bus to go to the sports center, and we arrived after 10 minutes at our destination, and we saw that Gwen had already finished her karate training for today, and I saw that she was no longer a 10-year-old girl, but a teenager of 15 years. Ben. How's my favorite cousin? Ben asked Gwen and she hugged him. Gwen. Ben, I'm still undefeated and the compliment says you need something. Gwen said. They say. And what am I? Cut liver. It's been a long time Gwen. I said behind the stands and Gwen was surprised to see me. Gwen. Issei you've come back and you haven't aged at all, what difference does it make, you're here. Gwen said when she saw me. Issei. You haven't changed much either, Gwen, except that you're a 15 year old teenager. I said. Gwen. Seriously, tell me what's wrong. Gwen asked. Ben. We have a problem. Ben said. Issei. And we need your help. I said. Gwen. Okay, I'll go change. Gwen said and she went to the girl's locker room to take off her karate clothes, and I looked next to the back entrance at a female figure that covered her face with a hood, and I don't know who it was, but I know that's not Labrad, but I recognized a pink object on his wrist. I hope that person is not who I think they are. It was already night and Ben and I fell asleep on the tatami because of the boredom of doing nothing, and Gwen came in her outfit that consisted of a white shirt covered with a blue blouse, black skirt, black stockings and black shoes, and she left them loose. Their hair. Gwen came to us and we woke up and she saw that Ben was drooling from his mouth. Gwen. Well, that's attractive. Gwen said when she saw that Ben was drooling. They say, get up Ben. I said and we got up. Ben. I'm already awake. Ben said. Gwen. What do you need? Gwen asked. They say. We need advice. I said me and Ben and I showed our Omnitrix. Ben and I showed Max's message to Gwen and she has no idea what she means, but I do know. Gwen. Grandpa says he has the Omnitrix, but he's not true, you have them. Gwen said. Ben. Yes, he sent us this message, I think he wants us to use them again. Ben said when he saw his Omnitrix and I looked at mine too. I say. Ben, you don't have to put it in if you don't want to, it's your decision and mine too. I said and I also doubt putting my Omnitrix in again. Gwen. It was always your decision and you don't have to do it if you both don't want to. Gwen said. Ben. I used to love the Omnitrix, it made me feel special. Ben said. They say. Ben, it's not the tool that makes the hero, but the correct use you give it. I won't wear it if you don't want to, Ben, it's your decision. I said. When. Besides, Ben, you earned the right to have a normal life after the feedback incident, if you and Issei put them on again, the normal life you know is over. Gwen said. Ben. But Grandpa needs our help. Ben said. When. He said no. Plus remember the trouble we had getting it off you, well Asmuth took it off Issei with ease. Gwen said and we heard the door open and saw a man in a trench coat, who I know is the plumber Magister Labrad wearing a mask to hide his true form. Labrad. The Omnitrix are not yours, give them to me disguised Labrad said. Ben. Not crazy. Ben said and the three of us ran away from Labrad and he chased us to the exit that was locked and we saw that he was behind us now. Labrad. Give them to me, now Labrad said. Ben. Or what? Ben asked. They say. Now I know what's going to happen. I said and Labrad took off his mask and revealed his true form. Ben. That doesn't scare me. Ben said. They say. Bad question, Ben, now he's going to shoot us. I said. Labrad. Don't make me use it on you and your friend. Labrad said, shooting at Ben that he almost hit him, and we saw how Gwen used her anodite powers and prepared to fight against the plumber Magister Labrad, and he started shooting with his blaster, and Gwen threw a burst of mana at him and managed to hold him back. In the air. They say. Amazing, Gwen, I like how you used your magic against him. I said, saying it was magic, but I know it's his anodite powers from his grandmother Verdona. Then. 
Issei's right, you're really good at that. Ben said. Gwen. Thank you. Gwen said. Issei. We want answers right now, Labrad, otherwise I said. Labrad? Yes. Labrad asked. Ben. I don't know, we overfeed you. Ben said and I got a drop of sweat and I'm style. Issei. Really? I said. Labrad. Do I look like someone to joke with? I am an agent of the plumbers, an intergalactic order organization. Labrad said. Ben. I know who they are, my grandpa Max used to be a plumber. Ben sat and Labrad was surprised to hear that Max was Ben's grandfather. Labrad. Max Tennyson. He helped me with a case but he disappeared. Labrad said. Gwen. We're looking for him. Gwen said. Issei. Yes, Ben, Gwen and I are trying to find him, I'm Issei Haidu, by the way. I said introducing myself to the plumber. Labrad. Wait, is he your grandfather? You are the legendary Ben Tennyson and your friend is Issei Haidu? Labrad asked, surprised to learn about me. Issei. The same ones who dress and fit. I said. Labrad. I thought you were a thief who had stolen something from the Tartana, I owe you two an apology, if you can take this from me we can find it together. Labrad said and Gwen lowered him to the ground. Issei. It's now or never, Ben. I said and I put my red Omnitrix on my wrist and it feels good to use the Omnitrix again after one month. Gwen. Are you sure? Gwen asked and I nodded to Ben and he put his Omnitrix in his wrist. Now yes, Ben 10 and Issei 10 are back, Ben. Of course. Ben said and showed everyone the Omnitrix Delnate and we showed them. After one hour we have reached the area of abandoned train cars and I know that this is the place where Kevin Levin is going to sell laser spears to the Forever Knights and the Dnalians. Issei. This is the place. I said to the others. Gwen. And what are we doing here? Gwen asked. Labrad. Watching. According to your grandfather, the Eternal Knights, a group of criminals who Labrad said but Ben finished the sentence for him. Ben. They exchange technology. Yes, I know them, Issei and I have already fraud against them. Ben said. Issei. And they were led by a man named Enoch. I said. Labrad. They're supposed to come here to receive an order for illegal alien technology. Labrad said. Gwen. Who will they get it from? Gwen asked. Labrad. I don't know, Max was going to tell me, but he disappeared. Labrad said. Say, I have an idea of who it's going to be, get down, they're coming. I said and we crouched down and saw that two trucks were coming, and they were being driven by forever knights and DNAs disguised as humans. And behind one of the trucks came two vehicles. A green car with black stripes and a magenta motorcycle. Strange thing, only Kevin's car appeared in the episode, who is the person driving the motorcycle. The car and the motorcycle stopped and out of the car came a guy with black hair styled like a mullet and was wearing a black t-shirt on top of a grey long sleeved shirt, black jeans and black shoes. It was Kevin Levin, formerly Kevin Eleven. The other person was wearing a purple motorcycle suit and was wearing a black helmet and proceeded to take them off as if nothing had happened and I saw that she was wearing a black dress, a lavender blouse, black- Now my blood is boiling, it's Rainer and she's using her human appearance as Uma Mono. When? It's Kevin and Rainer Gwen said when she saw the Asmosian and the fallen angel who ruined my life. Labrad. Do you know them? Labrad asked. Ben. Kevin Levin and Rainer, they have superpowers, I fought Kevin when we were kids. Ben said about Kevin and that he is no longer an alien chimera. They say. And Rainer is an enemy of my world, she almost killed me on my first date and almost ended the life of my friend Asia. My girlfriend Rhea's destroyed her and came back in this world to take revenge on me and just seeing her makes my blood boil. I said, enraged upon seeing again the fallen angel who destroyed my life. When. Don't forget the part where you went all crazy and tried to kill her like a human gausaur after you tore off her wings and punched Ben in the stomach in all your anger and almost committed cannibalism against her. In Chicago. Gwen said, reminding me of the incident at the Chicago theater. I say. I apologized later, okay, and those two were trapped in the void, an extra-dimensional prison. I said and we watched as one of the Forever Nets approached Kevin and Rainer and gave them a brown briefcase that contained money as payment for the laser spears and opened it, and the two were satisfied. Uma. I like what I see in there. Rainer said when she saw the amount of money in the briefcase. Kevin. The money is here. Kevin said to one of the DNAs disguised as humans and gave them a gesture to take the merchandise out of the truck. Labrad. Well, the two of them are just intermediaries. Labrad said upon seeing the scene. Ben. And what? You said it was illegal. Ben said. They say. What are you up to now, Rainer? I said between my teeth when I saw my worst enemy next to Kevin, and we saw how Kevin returned the briefcase to the Eternal Knight and one of the DNAs brought the boxes with the laser spears and opened a box. Rainer. Show our customers the merchandise, Kevin, if you would. Rainer said and he nodded. Kevin. As promised, four dozen laser spears. 
volatile energy points with emitting antenna, serves for 35 minutes of continuous fire at 6 terawatts point. Kevin said. Rainer. Try shooting this rusty train car, Kevin, to let them know of the power of our device. Rainer said and snapped his fingers, and Kevin fired the laser spear at the train car and made it explode. Kevin. What do you think? Kevin asked and apparently the forever knights licked him, but Labrad and I didn't like what we saw. They say. I already expected it from Kevin, but from Rainer, that bucking bitch, I expected it even more I said enraged. Labrad. And those spears are level 5 technology, planet earth is only level 2 Labrad said angrily. Ben. Hey, what's up with being silent? Ben asked and we saw how Labrad went next to the Dnalians, Forever Knights and Kevin and Rainer to arrest them, and armed with his blaster and his plumber's badge in both hands, and the three of us followed him, and saw how they loaded the merchandise to the other truck. Labrad. Surrender, you're trapped by the plumber's authority you are under arrest, said Labrad and we saw how three of the DNAs removed their masks and revealed their true forms, and they are more disgusting than he remembered. Gwen. Wow, how scary. Gwen said disgusted. Ben. Really? Gwen asked. They say. It was sarcasm, man. I said and the DNAs stalked us. Labrad. Back off Labrad said and shot his blaster at the ground, and a circle of fire came out to keep the DNAs at bay. Ben. What now? Ben A. Labrad asked. Labrad. Go. Labrad said. They say. I don't believe it. I said. Ben. Because the other guys are behind us. Ben sat and we watched as the Forever Knights took off their hoods and revealed their new silver armor and had laser spears in their hands. Gwen. We're done. Gwen said scared. They say. On the contrary, this is about to start. I said and revealed my red omnitrix and Ben did the same as me. Ben. Let's go Ben said. The two. It's hero time Ben and I said in unison, and we activated our omnitrix and hit them, but we didn't transform, and we saw that the symbol of our omnitrix changed color, Ben's went from green to blue and mine from red to orange. They say. Shit, now I remember, they're recalibrating I said, but that should just be Ben's watch, why is my omnitrix recalibrating now? Omnitrix is say, recalibration mode activated, please wait. My omnitrix said. Gwen. Ben, is say. Gwen asked desperately. They say. It's not our fault, Gwen, our clocks are recalibrating. I said, trying to activate my Omnitrix, but it kept repeating itself that it was recalibrating, and that I had to wait, and we saw how our enemies were coming towards us, they were getting closer and closer to us. Gwen. Ben, say, seriously, Gwen said irritated. Ben. It's a bad time to reset. Ben said trying to make his Omnitrix work, but without success. say, We have nothing I said. Gwen. Maybe I do. Gwen said and used her anodite powers against the Forever Knights and Labrad, tried to shoot the DNAs with her blaster, but they both counterattacked. Ben and I ran to escape from our pursuers, and trying to activate our watches, but they didn't work in mine, repeated the same phrase over and over again. One of the DNAs threw sticky slime at Labrad and disarmed him, and the others did the same, and Labrad was completely immobilized. Ben and I kept running from the DNA that was chasing us and throwing sticky slime at us along the road, and we dodged it, and I had the idea to throw the wooden planks at his head, and we managed to knock him out, and the two of us proceeded to activate our watches and I know this is the moment where Ben's watch will change shape and get new aliens, but will it also work with mine? Gwen was keeping the Forever Knights and their laser lances at bay and they managed to break her mana shield and Gwen and just when she was going to attack them, she stepped on sticky slime from the DNAs, and the said aliens did the same to her as to Labrad and they left her immobilized with their sticky slime. Ben and I were still trying to get our watches to work, and after some time I heard my Omnitrix say. Omnitrix is say, recalibration completed, all functions are operational, activating mode 2.0 said my Omnitrix and we saw how the watches changed shape and Ben's watch became the Omnitrix alien force while mine became the Omnitrix from Ben 10 Omniverse. Ben. I've never done it. Ben said upon seeing his recalibrated Omnitrix. They say. And that you say it. I said and proceeded to activate it, and I noticed that Ben has his aliens from alien force, while mine are the ones he used in the classic series. Ben. They're the same ones you used when we met. Ben said when he saw the aliens that I used in the game and he selected Muddy and I chose Inferno. They say. Well, under these circumstances, these two look very good. I said and we hit our Omnitrix and transformed into Muddy and Inferno respectively. Ben Muddy, Muddy Muddy Ben shouted. They say Inferno, Heatlist I screamed like Heatlist, and it was incredible to transform myself into an alien again, but there was one thing to complain about. The horrible smell of mud, yuck. Ben Muddy, what's wrong? Ben asked. The same inferno, you smell like dung I said covering my nose. Ben Swampfire, sorry, but you started it in Seattle five years ago. Ben said, reminding me of my first transformation into Muddy after defeating the plant dragon in Seattle. The same inferno, touche. 
I said and we went back to Gwen and Labra to help them against the DNAs, and we used our new aliens for combat, and we quickly got used to them. Then Muddy, don't bother our friends Ben said, and we proceeded to attack the Dnalians with punches, and I decided to throw fireballs at them to scare them, and we saw how some of them tried to escape in his truck, but Ben used a nearby rusty pipe and made the truck overturn. The same inferno, I forgot how fun this was I said. Then Muddy, and say it Ben said, and he received a shot from a laser spear from the Forever Knights but it didn't do anything to him, just tickles, but one shot hit him in the arm and left him one-handed, but I reminded Ben that Muddy also has the powers of Wilveen and his amputated arm reattached to his arm. Ben Muddy, you're in big trouble Ben said, and we attacked the Forever Knights and left them knocked out, and just when we tried to attack more of them, Kevin and Raynor came in the middle so we could fight them. Kevin. Hey, Tennyson and Haidu Kevin said. Uma. Issa Raynor said enraged when she saw me. Issa Inferno, Raynor I said when I saw my archenemy in front of me. Ben Muddy, what do you two want? Ben asked our respective enemies. Heaven. Let's see, you and your friend trapped me in the void and broke a few ribs in the woods at the sawmill years ago. Kevin said. Uma. And you left me in pieces in Chicago after Issa broke every bone in my body and tried to kill me as a human gausor, and also as Kevin I also ended up in the void Raynor said. Ben Muddy, that was your fault Ben said. The same inferno, and the two of you had deserved it, especially you, Rainer I said to the fallen angel. Kevin. And you ruined our deal today I think you Uma and I want revenge Kevin said, and we saw how Rainer changed into his fallen angel form. Uma. Prepare to die Rainer said preparing a spear of light. Kevin. And besides, I can absorb anything and I have enough power to take it, Kevin said absorbing the metal from the train rails and covered himself with a metal skin, and he and Rainer attacked us with their respective powers, and Ben was surprised that Kevin could absorb metal, and he didn't realize that Kevin went through him with his fist and Rainer thrown a spear of light at her head, but I burned her with heatless fire and proceeded to throw a fireball at her motorcycle to prevent her from escaping and she ended up melted. Uma. My motorcycle you will pay me, Issa Haidu, not only with money, but also with your life Rainer shouted enraged and threw a spear of light at me, but I know I burned it too. Issa Inferno, nice try, Rainer, it's just that you didn't learn anything last time. I said mocking Rainer. Uma. Last time you almost killed me, Animal Rainer said, and she threw more spears of light at me, but I repeated the same move, and I threw her next to Ben and Logramals, knocking out both her and Kevin, and we saw how the Dnalians and the Forever Knights filled in their trucks and Labrad put handcuffs on the Asmosian and to the Fallen Angel. After five minutes they woke up and Ben and I transformed back into humans to see our enemies, but when they tried to attack us, they saw that they were handcuffed on both hands. Uma. What the heat list? Rainer asked when she saw the handcuffs. Labrad. Energy handcuffs, you cannot escape, absorb N or fly away. Labrad said to Kevin and Rainer. They say. Hey, Gwen, you still have alien slime in your hair. I said and Gwen touched her hair, but she couldn't find anything until Kevin told her it was the other side, and she got disgusted, and I saw how Rainer's face turned green with disgust, and she felt like vomiting, and she made me smile seeing her disgusted, and then Labrad came with a laser spear in his hand to interrogate them. Labrad. Time to talk, bad boys. These weapons use cellular energy, very dangerous and advanced technology for humans and should not be on this planet. Labrad said. Kevin. And what's the problem? Kevin asked. Uma. Complain to the Forever Knights and the aliens who sold them to us, and not to us, fools. Rainer said. They say. Look who was talking. The fool. I said. Ben. Getting back to the topic, when we were fighting the Forever Knights ran away with a load full. Ben said. Labrad. You two made the deal, are you going to tell me where they are? Labrad asked the two criminals until Gwen approached them. Gwen. Kevin, Rainer, people can get hurt. Gwen said. Labrad. You're in big trouble, guys, I'm giving you a chance. Labrad said. Uma. Okay, we'll help you, that's better than going back to the void. Rainer said. Kevin. And if Uma does it, so will I, those guys ran before they paid us, I'll be happy to tell you where to find them. Kevin said and we went to his car but I decided to try something with the DNA, knocked out and I used the Omnitrix to cure him and not only that, the Omnitrix also said that not only his DNA has been cleaned, but also the memories of being transformed into DNA, they have been deleted. I went to the car and was forced to sit next to Rainer in the middle seat with her and we were squeezed like sardines in a can, at the same time Ben and I looked at the aliens on our recalibrated Omnitrix and saw the new list we have. Ben had Goop, Muddy, Megachrome, Frosty, Human Gaussor, Brainstorm, Jet Ray, Spider Monkey, Echo Echo and Alien X LR8, Arctiguana, Wildmid and also Alien X. They say. Of all the places I had to sit, it had to be next to the person I hate the most in the entire multiverse I said, when I knew that I had Rainer by my side. Uma. I offered you my motorcycle, but you melted it and the trunk is free, go there if you want. 
Rainer said and Labrad gave us a slap to stop arguing. Labrad. I think I should drive. Labrad said to Kevin. Kevin. Only I drive this car. Kevin said. Gwen. What do you know about aliens? Gwen asked Labrad about DNAs. Labrad. I know absolutely nothing about them, I had not met that species. Labrad said. Ben. I don't see you here and I don't know how this thing works anymore. Ben said looking at his aliens, but he saw that the DNAs were not on his selection list. I say. I can't say much about those aliens, but I can only tell you that they are not what you think they are. I said. Uma. Of course, the walking alien encyclopedia is back on the attack. Rainer said mocking me. Labrad. There's been a lot of alien activity lately, I don't know why, your grandfather thought the arms deal would lead us to what's causing so much interest, now he's missing. Labrad said. When? Knowing grandpa, he's probably in a restaurant eating cockroach salad, it's wonderful that all that food doesn't kill him. Gwen said, and upon hearing that, Ben got angry. Ben. He's not dead, stop making jokes, Gwen Ben shouted to Gwen and upon hearing that, Kevin stopped the car abruptly. Kevin. Don't talk to Gwen like that, Tennyson Kevin said, reprimanding Ben. Ben. I talk to him how I want Ben said angrily. I say. Ben, getting angry isn't going to help us find Max. I said. Uma. I don't care about that old man's life, let him die now, that's what old people like him are for Rainer said, and I slapped him for his lack of respect for Max. I say. No one speaks ill of Max Tennyson in my presence, especially scum like you, Rainer, okay? I said angry. I say, sorry Ben. I said. Ben, no, I say, Kevin's right, I'm sorry Gwen. Ben said apologizing to Gwen. Gwen. I know you and I say are worried about grandpa. Gwen said. Ben. I wish he was here, he would know what to do, he always knows what to do. Ben said and you can tell that in his voice that he misses his grandfather. Labrad. Well, it's not here, you and Issei have the Omnitrix, the two of you will have to learn to solve things by yourselves. Labrad said. Issei. Labrad is right, Ben, I know we will be able to find Max, but only if we work together. I said. Uma. It's not my problem. Rainer said. Issei. You will help us or we will send you back to the void. I said, threatening the fallen angel, and we heard how Kevin stepped on the pedal of the car, and we went to a castle of the Eternal Knights. Kevin. It's here. Kevin said parking the car near the drawbridge. Ben. It's weird, no one would look for the forever nightshire. Ben said when he saw the castle. Uma. They're knights, they obviously live in a castle, donkey. Rainer said. Labrad. How do we get in? Labrad asked. Ben. Gwen. Ben said and we got out of the car, and Gwen used her anodite powers to lower the drawbridge. Kevin. You might as well have blown us in, Yuma. Kevin A. Rainer said. Yuma. I can't fly carrying a lot of weight, I'm sorry. Rainer said and we went inside, and Gwen used her powers to light up the castle, and Yuma took out a flashlight from the pocket of her blouse. I say. How practical, a pocket flashlight, what would you get next, a rabbit? I said mocking Rainer. Yuma. You shut up or I'll stick a spear in you where the sun doesn't rise. Rainer said. Gwen. There's no one here, are you sure it's the right place? Gwen asked. Kevin. There's a secret door, look for it. Kevin said and we looked all over the place and saw the vast collection of treasures of the Forever Knights and Kevin and Yuma put them in their pockets for being the greedy thieves that they are. Ben. Maybe you and Yuma should have brought a shopping cart. Ben said. Yuma. And what do you know, Tennyson? Don't you know that jewelry is the best friend of a pretty girl like me? Rainer said putting a princess tiara on her head. I say. Behold, the spoiled princess of the scoundrels, Princess Rainer I said, making fun of Rainer again and laughing at her. Ben. Still, I don't like how this looks. Ben said seeing the armor and took a few steps back and collided with an armor that was behind him and made it fall to the ground. Kevin. What are you waiting for, why is it taking you so long? Kevin asked irritably. Ben. Sorry, I think I'm a little Ben said, but I interrupted him. I say. Ben, behind you I said and we saw that behind Ben there was a huge dragon. It was the mechanical dragon, Uma. Okay, now I'm getting paranoid Rainer said, scared when she saw the robotic dragon of the Eternal Knights. A say in Ben's new adventure has begun in an unexpected way, new aliens, new enemies and a couple of old familiar faces allied with them and now, the threat of a huge robotic dragon is coming Chapter 02 will continue the story. Chapter 02. The return of two heroes reunions from the past second part, the OVSA, of all the things the Forever Knight should to build it had to be this mechanical monster, if Drake were here he would say that the Forever Knights deserve a fate worse than death for slandering the dragons, and I'm not going to lie, I hate that robot the most. Then Albedo, but now we had to face him. We were fleeing from the mechanical dragon, and here came Forever Knights armed with laser spears to get rid of us for entering their castle without permission. Gentlemen. 
Nobody move and hands on your head said the eternal knight armed with a sword. Kevin. Make me Kevin said and absorbed stone from the wall and covered his arms to attack them, and Raynor changed into his fallen angel form and took out a spear of light to attack them. Uma. Let's see what you think of this, tin idiots. Raynor said and threw her spears at the knights, while well, Kevin tore up part of the ground and caused an earthquake and knocked them out, so that then more knights came and started shooting at us, when protected us with a mana shield to block the shots, and Labrid used his blaster to attack them from a distance and knocked out a couple of them, and from behind, we heard how the mechanical dragon broke free of the little space where we escaped and proceeded to attack us. I say. Ben, it's time to transform I said to Ben, and he nodded and we activated our Omnitrix, and we transformed into Eco Eco and Wildmud. Then Eco Eco, Eco Eco Ben said like Echo Echo and started to multiply to distract the dragon. I say Wildmud, Grog I growled like Wildmud, since he is the only alien in the Omnitrix who doesn't know how to speak, Joe dude. I ran up to the Echo Echo clones and proceeded to attack the mechanical dragon with Wildmud's sharp claws and managed to expose his circuitry, and that was more traumatizing than Samurai Jack's family of metal eaters that traumatized me as a child until third grade. Dot. Author's note. Those of you who know Samurai Jack will know which characters I am referring to, and I will tell you that the episode Jack's Tales left me traumatized as a child, and yes, Issei is a fan of almost all the Cartoon Network series what was before in my childhood. Heaven had two of the Forever Knights and he headbutted them all in the face and knocked them out and Yuma impaled three of them with his light spear, not knowing that there was one, pointing a laser spear at them from the back until Labrid intervened. Labrid. Kevin, Yuma, watch out Labrid said and saved the two ex-villains from being shot, the Eternal Knight took the laser spear from him, not knowing that it was broken, and that he could explode if he pressed the button. Yuma. Hey, don't shoot, that laser spear is broken, Raynor warned the Eternal Knight, but he did not listen and pressed the button on the laser spear, but the weapon self-destructed and the knight died, exploded into a thousand pieces. Labrid saved Raynor and Kevin from the explosion, without knowing that his suit was damaged. And he started bleeding, and I know that this is the scene where he's going to die. Labrid. That's why level 5 technology is illegal on Earth, humans aren't ready. Labrid said, pointing to the helmet of the dead Eternal Knight. Kevin. I owe you one. Kevin said. Uma. Yes, thank you for saving us from the explosion. Raynor said. Labrid. Yes, that's right. Labrid said and the three of them went to help Gwen against the other Eternal Knights, while Ben and I took on the mechanical dragon. Then Eco Echo, got it, Issei, finish it off Ben said, and I nodded and gave the mechanical dragon a brutal bite to his right leg and left him lame. Ben decided to use Echo Echo's sonic scream and the clones did the same and the dragon was destroyed into a thousand pieces and exploded leaving nothing, only the screws of it. I, on the other hand, ended up dizzy from so much shouting about Eco Eco and his clones, and I ended up drooling all over Rainer's skirt. Uma. Yuck, alien dog drool, disgusting. She said wiping her drool and I simply stick out my tongue to make fun of her. Heaven. You can warn us when you do that Kevin said irritated. Uma. Yes, because of you I almost went deaf. Rainer said, irritated and with an earache. Gwen. Seriously, I have plugs in my bag. Gwen said. Then echo echo, sorry. Ben said and I did the same to grunts. Labrid took all the laser lances from the place and piled them up. Labrid. They're all of them, if you don't mind. Labrid said and we covered all our ears so that Ben would scream, and all the laser spears were destroyed, and I, Ben and Raynor, saw that Labrid was bleeding from his suit. Uma. Guys, look. Raynor said pointing to Labrid and Ben and I reverted back to our human forms. Ben. Hey, are you okay? There is water dripping from your suit. Ben said looking at Labrid's wound. Labrid. It's not water. Labrid said and fell dying to the ground. I say. It's not water, it's blood. I said and we helped the dying plumber. Heaven. Hey, are you okay, buddy? Labrid asked worriedly. Labrid. Ben, Issei, listen to me. Labrid said. Heaven. I have a medical kit in the car, maybe we can Kevin said, but Labrid interrupted him. Labrid. There is no time, there is nothing that can be done. Said Labrid and we saw that he turned pale and was wrinkling like a dry raisin. Gwen. Let us help you. Gwen said. Labrid. If you want to help me, finish the job, you must find where the level 5 technology comes from. Dying, Labrid said. I say. Sure, we will. I said. Labrid. It's just the tip of the iceberg, guys. Labrid said and we saw that his blood turned into gas, and Labrid didn't have much time left to live. I say. Where is Asia when you need her I said releasing tears. Labrid. Your grandfather was about to discover something big, an alien conspiracy with the earth in the middle Labrid said and started coughing. Uma. Don't die, please Rainer said releasing tears. Labrid. I was working undercover, if you and your friend solve this case, maybe you'll find Max and save your planet. 
And you, Issei, help Ben and the others in this, and also save your world from this threat. Labrad said. Issei. I'll do it, count on me. I said to the dying plumber. Ben. But I can't do it without grandpa, I don't know how. Ben said. Issei. Ben, even if Max isn't here, you have us to help you. I said to my friend. Labrad. Issei is right, you are Ben Tennyson, you can do everything and with the help of the Seker Uite. Those were Magister Labrad's last words, and he died dried out, and the only thing left of him is his empty plumber's suit. Ben, Kevin and I couldn't believe our eyes while Gwen and Rainer cried and Kevin comforted them. Uma. First quarrel and now another person who helped me see my past mistakes dies. Rainer said crying and I think I heard her say quarrel, the prisoner of the void who helped Kevin leave his wrath behind and escape from the void, but he died killed by Morg, the current jailer of Incarsican, maybe he also helped Rainer like he did with Kevin. Say, what now Ben? I asked. Ben. I'll need help. Ben said. Gwen. You know we support you and Say. Gwen said. Say. I go where you go, Ben. I said. Ben. Kevin, Rainer, there's no money in this, but Ben said, and Kevin took his plumber's badge from the belt of Labrad's suit. Kevin. I'm with you. Kevin said. Uma. I'll help you too as I can, if you accept me, of course. Rainer said and everyone except me nodded. Although Ben and the others can trust her, I never plan to forgive her for everything she did to me, and I know that if I had said no the day she asked me to go out with her, none of this would have happened, and my life would have been the same, although that way I would never meet Rias and the others, but, who knows. Still, I will never forgive Rainer, and I know I should have ripped off her head instead of her wings in Chicago. I went outside and decided to bury Labrad's suit under a tree on the outskirts of the castle, and remind him that he was a good man, and that he did not die in vain. I saw Rainer approach me and she tried to talk to me, but I pushed her away and she still liked him. I have hatred for all the misdeeds he committed, especially playing with my feelings. We went to the car except Gwen who used a laser spear that Kevin managed to save to find the Nas lair. Ben sat in the front seat with Kevin, and I was sitting in the back with Rainer. Ben. Are you sure it will work? Ben asked Gwen who was floating in the air with a laser spear spinning like a fidget spinner. Gwen. No, I've never done it before. Gwen said and she continued spinning the laser spear in the air. I say. Don't worry, Gwen, I know that works, believe me. I said. Gwen. In theory, I can track the vibrations of the old owners of this laser spear. Gwen said and she began to meditate, and the laser spear pointed forward like a compass pointing north. Ben. I thought I destroyed those things. Ben said. Uma. Yeah, my bad, I saved this one for Kevin in case of an emergency. Rainer said. I say. Typical of you, it was to be expected from a fallen angel. I said irritatedly and we saw that the laser lance was moving. Gwen. Guys, listen, it works, follow me Gwen said, and we followed her with Kevin's car, and she took us to what seemed to be the entrance to a mine, but Kevin didn't like the descent at all, and he complained. I say. Like Kevin, I also don't like hills on the road. I said and Kevin parked the car, and we saw a DNA disguised as a human standing guard, and he was armed with a shotgun in case of intruders. Gwen. It's here, in this mine. Gwen said and then we heard blows and saw that it was Kevin leaving KO. To the guard. Uma. Hey, Kevin, don't you think you've gone a little overboard? You knocked him out Rainer said about Kevin's Neanderthal methods. Kevin. He's not him, he's that Kevin said, removing the mask from the DNA and exposing its true form and showing it to us. Gwen. It's like the mask the aliens wore at the train station. Gwen said when she saw the mask. Uma. A very useful invention if it weren't used by those disgusting aliens Rainer said, and we went to the mine elevator and went down. They say. We're getting closer. I said. Kevin. There's not much to see down there. Kevin said, but what we saw now left us surprised. Ben. I can't believe it Ben said, and we saw that there was the mothership of the high breed, and it was huge, and we saw that there were DNAs entering or leaving the ship to do certain jobs. The elevator stopped and we observed what happened. Uma. Whoa, there must be like hundreds of them there on the ship or outside the ship. Rainer said. Kevin. It's big. Kevin said. Ben. It's the mothership, you don't understand, Grandpa Max is there Ben said, but I know this ship is just a small ship, and Max is not here. Gwen. And how do we get in? Gwen asked. They say. I have the perfect idea, Ben, do you still have the mask? I asked Ben and he nodded and took the DNA mask out of his pocket. Kevin. A plasma displacement mask, you can make it look what you want. Kevin said and Ben put on the mask and transformed into a DNA. Ben. How do I look? Ben asked. Kevin. Almost the same but higher. Kevin said. They say. The aliens would never suspect any of their own. 
I said and I saw how Gwen and Rainer came with a miner's cart so that we could start, except for Ben who used it and we hid, but in case of the flies I buttoned my jacket because of the cold inside the ship of the high breed, and I heard as Ben made silly greetings to the DNAs, and I got a drop of sweat and I'm style because of what Ben does. In the end we arrived and we saw that there was no one, and we got out of the car, and Ben took off his mask, and we all noticed how cold it was here inside. Kevin. It's very cold. Kevin said, shivering from the cold, but the one who was most affected was Rainer, since she was the only one who was wearing short sleeves, and she already started sneezing, and I saw that she has a mucus hanging like Buchan from Shinchan. Uma. Do I owe you a call? Seriously, Tennyson. Achu Rainer said and sneezed next to me. Gwen. You look like a baby, Rainer. Gwen said. Ben. Now, we'll find out where Grandpa is. Damn, it's cold. Ben said and he did the same thing as me and buttoned his jacket. Gwen. Okay, let me try something. Gwen said and she used her anodite powers to track down Max, but she wasn't on the ship. Issei. And was there any luck? I asked Gwen. Gwen. Sorry, Ben and Issei, Grandpa was here a couple of weeks ago, but he's not here now. Gwen said. Heaven. And now we're leaving here, right? Kevin said. Uma. Yeah, let's get out before I freeze to death, Achu Rainer said and sneezed, Ben said no, and told us the story that his grandfather taught him to ride a bike, and that he helped him, and that Ben could go alone without knowing that Max let him go, and that was a sign that Ben and I could do it alone for a long time. Ben. We're alone, guys, we'll finish this mission. Ben said and we went to the command center where Gwen saw the weapons warehouse while she was looking for Max, and we even saw the red plasma tube that she had in the center. Kevin absorbed some metal from the wall and found the warehouse door and wrenched it open, and we saw the laser lances stored. Uma. This must be the weapons warehouse. Rainer said. Kevin. Yes. Kevin said and Gwen proceeded to destroy the laser spears with her anodite powers, and the entire weapons warehouse was destroyed. Ben. Can you a little louder? Ben said. Kevin. No problem Kevin said, but I pointed to the wall, and we saw that there was a DNA, and he saw the whole scene, and called for reinforcements to attack us. They say. Great, now we have to take care of these guys. I said and the DNAs attacked us with their sticky slime, but Gwen projected a shield of mana to block her attacks. Rainer changed into her fallen angel form and launched spears of light towards them. Gwen. Guys, do something, we can't keep you busy, Rainer and I Gwen said. Ben I activate our Omnitrix and transform into Human Gaussor and Forearms respectively. Then Human Gaussor, Human Gaussor Ben shouted like Human Gaussor. I say Forearms, Forearms I shouted like Forearms. Ben human Gaussor, guess what time it is? Ben said. The safe forearms, yes, action hero I said me and Ben attacked the DNAs. Kevin absorbed more metal from the ground and protected his entire body. Kevin. Save some for me, those guys stole my money. Kevin said. Uma, you mean they stole money from us Kevin. Rainer said and hit a DNA with his spear like a baseball bat. Kevin. And also because they are bad and we are against them. Kevin said and punched the DNA and decapitated it, while Gwen launched bursts of mana towards the DNAs, and Rainer covered her with attacks from behind. Ben and I knocked the DNAs out with punches and using a brute force combo like in the game, and left them knocked out until one of them threw slime at Ben's arm and immobilized him. Ben human Gaussor, I can't believe you did this Ben said, but he lifted up part of the ground and used it as a shield to herd the Dnalians, and I used my forearms to leave them in place, and we knocked them all out after 10 minutes. Kevin. We beat them. Kevin said. Ben human Gaussor, until now, but there must be hundreds of them here. Ben said. Gwen. We destroy the weapons, why don't we leave? Gwen said. Uma. Yes, before I turn into an ice cube, Achu Rainer said sneezing at Gwen and got disgusted. The say forearms, for once, it's a good idea, let's get out before oh, shit. I said and we saw someone worse than the DNAs. A Supreme. Supreme. What are you doing on my ship? The Supreme asked when he saw us. Uma. It's huge Rainer said, scared when she saw the Supreme. Supreme. I won't repeat it to you, lower life forms, what are you doing on my ship? The xenophobic alien asked. Kevin. Did you just call me inferior? Kevin asked offended. Ben human Gaussor, I think so. Ben said. Gwen. And you may be right, it's hard to say. Gwen said. Uma. Inferior your mother, eight eyes Rainer said irritated and threw a spear of light at the Supreme, but he caught it and broke it as if it were nothing. The say four arms, bad idea. I said. Supreme. How dare you insult a high-ranking commander? The Supreme asked angrily. Ben human Gaussor, I laugh at anyone who looks like you Ben said, and Kevin started attacking him. The say forearms, Kevin, no I said trying to stop Kevin, but he started attacking the Supreme, but he was defeated after seconds. Gwen. Kevin Gwen said and the Supreme was going towards Kevin, but Gwen stopped him with her anodite powers, and Rainer saved Kevin from dying at the hands of the Supreme. 
Buma, are you okay Kevin? Raynor asked and he nodded. The safe forearms, he's too strong I said. Then human Gausor, leave it to us. Ben said. When? We won't let you and the safe face this thing alone Gwen said. The safe forearms, there's no time to argue, Kevin, get them out of here. I said to the Asmosian. Heaven? You heard, come on. Kevin said and he, Gwen and Raynor left outside. Gwen? Let go of me Gwen said. Uma. Don't argue, Gwen, we have to get out of here Raynor said, and the three of them left the ship, and it was Ben and I's turn to fight the Supreme. The aforementioned broke free from the shackles of mana and was now ready to kill us. Supreme. Fools, you two will face me alone, I like these kinds of disadvantages. Said the Supreme and Ben and I faced him and without a doubt he was strong, I think that not even Giant can do anything against him, and the Supreme was insulting us like despicable creatures and other things. Supreme. You have ruined everything by discovering this place, you have delayed our plans for months, the Supreme said and he threw Ben and me against a computer. Supreme. Inferior trash, I must move my ship, find a new place, I must sterilize the area said the Supreme. Ben human Gausor, sterilize? Ben asked. The say four arms, in other words, destroy everything within five miles from here to Bellwood, right? Vermin I said, spitting in the Supreme Court's face. Supreme. Right, but no one will live to tell about it said the Supreme. Then human Gausor, we won't leave you Ben said, but the Supreme one grabbed him by the neck. Supreme. I can and I will said the Supreme. Then human Gausor, let us go Ben said and bit the Supreme's hand and made him scream in pain. Supreme. Trash, you infected me the Supreme said angrily. The say four arms, if it was only a bite, don't exaggerate I said, but the Surimo grabbed us and threw Ben and I out of the ship and we almost fell to the ground if it weren't for Gwen and Raynor, saving us from certain death. Uma. You and Ben almost died. Raynor said. The say four arms, I didn't ask you to save me I said to the fallen angel. Heaven. Still, you and Isaya lost. Kevin said. Ben. He's going to destroy the town. Ben said. When? How? Gwen asked. The say four arms, that's easy, with a laser weapon from under the ship. I said. Ben human Gausor, we must stop him said Ben and we saw the supreme ship take off and Gwen protected us with a mana barrier to avoid being incinerated by the ship's thrusters. Ben used the giant human Gausor form and tried to stop the ship and I heard Raynor collapse to the ground after seeing the giant human Gausor form reminding her of when I almost killed her in Chicago. Ben human Gausor, you're in big trouble, Ben said running after the ship and grabbed onto one of the thrusters and the DNAs activated the laser weapon to destroy Bellwood, starting in the parking lot near the hospital, and they destroyed half a street. Ben tried to knock down the ship with his punches to avoid destruction and managed to tear out the cables and avoid the massacre, but he couldn't hold on for long. I transformed back into a human and we all got out of the hole, and we saw that Ben didn't have the strength to hold on, and he fell from the top of the ship, and he transformed back into a human, and he saw how the ship crashed into a mountain and exploded into a thousand pieces, and the DNAs and the Supreme died in the process. Ben. I feel bad. Ben said and we came to him to find out if he was okay, and we saw how he bandaged his leg with a piece of his pants. I say. Ben, thank goodness we found you. I said when I saw that Ben was fine. Ben. How did you find me? Ben asked. Kevin. It wasn't hard, just look at the whole mess you made. Kevin said. Uma. Especially the huge hole created by human Gausor. Raynor said. Gwen. Are you okay? Gwen asked worriedly. Ben. Human Gausor got hurt and I'm hurt too. Ben said, lowering his pants. Kevin. And what do we do now? Kevin asked. I say. Isn't it obvious? I said. Ben. We will continue looking for Grandpa Max, I think the best way to do it is to solve the case he was working on. Ben said. Gwen. Piece of cake. Gwen said. Issei, count on me Ben. I said. Ben. Listen you two, I know Issei and I had a lot of problems in the past, but I want to thank you. We wouldn't have done it without you, Kevin, or with you, Raynor. Ben said to our respective axe enemies and extended his hand to the two of them. Kevin. Yes, you wouldn't have done it without me. Kevin said. Uma. I will help you, with one condition. That you call me Uma from now on, I have left my past behind, and my times as a fallen angel are over once and for all, and my stay in the void has made me see the evil that I've done it to people. Uma said, sorry for everything she did, I would like to believe that, you bucking liar. Gwen. You two want to help us? Gwen asked Kevin and Uma. Kevin. What I want to say is that I made a promise to someone, and I'm going to follow through with this until the end. Kevin said. Uma, yes and me too. And it was thanks to someone who made Kevin and I see our mistakes. Yuma said and I saw a tear come out and maybe he was referring to Coral, I can't buy it. Ben. Then we can shake hands. Ben said and he and I extended our arms and each of us put his hands on top of the other. They say. It's hero time. 
I said and the new Tennyson team was formed. We went to the car and before Yuma and I got in, I decided to say what I think of her. I say. You may have managed to fool Ben and the others with your redemption, but you can't fool me with your stories. Let me tell you something right now, Rainer, if you dare to hurt Ben, Gwen or Kevin, believe me, I won't hesitate to kill you here, and now I said, getting into the car and shut the door tightly and ignored Rainer for the rest of the trip back to Bellwood, but Ben noticed that she was crying horribly, which in my opinion are just crocodile tears. Ben. I know that Yuma is now a good person, and she can tell that she is sorry and she wants to help us. I say, at least give him a chance. Ben said in his mind and we drove back to Bellwood. POV Azazel, I was trying to repair the multiversal gate after I dropped my coffee cup on the keyboard and I know it will take a while for it to be operational again, if I hurry, maybe I'll be able to return a say in a couple of weeks. Azazel. Shit, what was I thinking? I have to hurry to fix the machine before someone finds out. I said and Roswiss came in, pissed off when she found out what I said. Roswiss. Azazel, what have you done this time? And what happened inside here? Roswiss asked when she saw the place in a disaster state, and I explained what happened inside here, and that Issei ended up in another world of the multiverse because of me. Roswiss. How can you think of leaving the coffee near the roof? It was obvious that it fell. Roswiss said angrily. Azazel. I'm trying to repair the machine as soon as possible. Roswiss, help me with that please. I said to the ex-Valkyrie. Roswiss. And why should I? Roswiss asked. Azazel. If you help me, I let you humiliate Lord Odin the next time he comes here, okay? I suggested Roswiss. Roswiss? Okay, I'll help you, I'm still planning on getting revenge on that bucking geezer for getting rid of me like I'm trash Roswiss said, and he helped me to repair the machine and restart the computer to find which world Issei is located in, but I know that there are like millions of worlds in the multiverse and find Issei. Ben and Issei have had their first confrontation against a high breed and survived by a hair, and a new team was formed to save the universe from extinction, but although Ben has managed to forgive Yuma, Issei cannot do it, and that will test his friendship with Ben, Gwen and Kevin. Can Issei help Team Tennyson find Grandpa Max or will his anger and hatred towards Yuma cause the end of the human race? Chapter 03 will continue the story. Chapter 03. Climate change meeting Alan Albright, normal POV, it was a sunny and dry day, and in a cornfield, a flash of fire could be seen flying, and at the same time there were also police officers who were chasing at being made of fire. Sheriff Mason, Mason. Suspect headed west from Douglas Farm, do you have the truck ready? Sheriff Mason asked one of his deputies on a walkie-talkie, and was told that the truck is on its way. On the other side, there was a police car that started the chase when it was on fire in one of the several corn fields, and the creature collided with a scarecrow and fell to the ground. Alan. Really, I'm no good at flying, I won't do it again. Said the being of fire, rubbing his head from the collision with the scarecrow, without knowing that Sheriff Mason and two of his agents had cornered him with a fire truck and the hose prepared. Alan. I don't want to hurt you guys. The being of fire said to the police. Mason. Good luck, turn him off Mason ordered his agents and a huge jet of water came out of the hose and wet the creature, and almost put out its flames in the process. Alan. Stop said the being, throwing a fireball from his chest at the police officers and destroyed the fire truck in the process, fortunately the police officers were not hurt. Alan. What, aren't you planning to leave me alone? The being asked the police officers and he heard patrol car sirens, and he was run over and fell knocked out to the ground and reverted to being an African-American boy with shaved black hair, a white tank top, grey jeans and black and white sneakers. That one boy was at Alan Albright. Mason and his police officers took Alan to an ice cube warehouse to question him about strange things, and to prevent the boy from escaping, they handcuffed him on both hands. Mason. Are you going to speak, Alan, the only question is when you will. Mason said to the boy, but he just ignores him. Mason. Speak up, Alan, or we won't let you go home. In the past weeks there have been many fires throughout the town. Mason said. Alan. I didn't do anything Alan said angrily. Mason. I knew you could talk, now we're just waiting for you to say something smart. Mason said. Alan. What's the point? You won't believe me anyway. Alan said. Mason. Fire is all over town, roads burned, Mrs. Albright's oldest son seems to be some kind of fire mutant we can't trust. Mason said, confronting Alan, but he doesn't speak to him. Mason. Returning to the silence, right. Mason said and confiscated Alan's plumber's badge from his chest. Alan. Give it to me, my father gave it to me, Alan said angrily to Mason. Mason. You won't have any trouble telling me what it is. Mason said with a badge in his hand. Alan. It's mine Alan said. Mason. Unless you're guilty of the fires. Mason said and he and his partner left the ice room and let Alan freeze, and Mason left the plumber's badge on the desk. Mason. Keep it there until I can find a judge to tell us what to do with it. 
Mason said, not knowing that the badge started beeping. The OVSA, the group and I were on our way back to Bellwood, and we noticed that it was already night, and Ben had to be home already, and Rainer is telling Kevin to speed up, but he can't because of traffic laws. Seriously, Kevin, do you care about the law now? What a donkey, Ben. Can this go faster? Ben asked irritably. Kevin? Yes. Kevin said lying and he saw the sign where he said that the speed limit was 25, and he was driving slower now. Uma. Kevin, you damn liar. Rainer said irritated and Kevin was smiling for trolling Ben. Ben? Yes, let's speed. Ben said irritably. Kevin? It's called the speed limit, it's the fastest we'll go today. Kevin said. Ben? You said that Ben said, but Kevin interrupted him. Kevin? I can more, I don't want to. Kevin said. They say. Leave it, Ben, it's impossible to reason with Kevin. I said to my friend. Ben? But my mother will kill me if I come home late again. Ben said. Kevin? Well, if she punishes you, it will just be Gwen and I, how sad. Kevin said. The say and you Uma. And what are we, severed liver? Rainer and I ask in unison, irritated. Gwen? Still, do you think I'd go with you even if Ben, Issei, and you Uma weren't here? Gwen asked. Kevin? Yes, I have my charisma. Kevin said. Uma? Well, your charisma won't work on me, Kevin. Rainer said and we started hearing a beeping sound, and since I know the episode, I know it's Kevin's plumber's license plate. Gwen? Calling for Mr. Charisma. Gwen asked. Kevin? I don't have a cell phone. Kevin said. Uma, I bet she's one of your many girlfriends from your harem Kevin. Rainer said and Kevin showed him the middle finger. Gwen reached her hand into Kevin's jacket pocket and pulled out the plumber's badge. Gwen? Hey, it's your plumber's license plate, what's it doing here? Gwen asked. Kevin? I don't know, it's new to me. Kevin said and the plate projected a map of the place, and it was seen that he was locating something. They say. Wow, I forgot the plates did that. I said when I saw the map. Ben? It's some kind of map, I bet it's a badge GPS. Ben said. Kevin? And why is one of them blinking? Kevin asked. Ben? It must be a message from Grandpa Max, he tells us where he is. Ben said but I know he's wrong. Uma? Do you think? Rainer asked. They say. I doubt it. I said. Kevin? Well, that's enough to break the limit, Kevin said stepping on the accelerator, and we headed directly towards Grover's Mill, which was six miles from here. Meanwhile with Alan, he was freezing alive in there, and he can't transform with the cold it was in here, and he got the idea to burn the handcuffs with his lava spit, and he succeeded and he came out of the warehouse and saw the police officer who I was watching the sleeping place and Alan transformed and burst a huge hole in the wall. Back with us, we reached the ice cube warehouse, and I saw the huge hole in the wall created by Alan. Uma. It's here. Rainer said. Gwen. Was Grandpa Max here? Gwen asked. Kevin. That's what the light indicates, I think we'll find the rest in no time. Kevin said. Ben. It's inside the building, come on. Ben said. Kevin. I'm going to leave my jacket in the car, it's very hot here. Kevin said that he went to the car to put his jacket away. They say. That's what happens when you try to look good all the time. I said and we heard Gwen say to come see what she found, and we saw the huge hole in the wall. They say. What a hole. I said knowing what's happening. Uma. How obvious of you, Geek Rainer said, and I tripped her to make her fall to the ground for calling me a geek. Ben. We should check it out, and Uma apologized to say. Ben A. Rainer said. Uma. You wish, Tennyson. Rainer said to Ben and we started to inspect the entire place and heard the beeping of the plumber's plate on the desk. They say. Guys, look. I said and Ben picked up the plate from the desk. Ben. I found what we were looking for. Ben said. When? Do you think it's Grandpa Max's? Gwen asked Ben. Ben. If he's his, he'll be somewhere, Issei and I will go after whatever made this hole. Ben said and we went to the cornfields to look for Max, but I know we'll only run into Alan Albright running away from Sheriff Mason. Back with Alan transformed into his inferno form, he was running away from the cops in the cornfields and decided to hide behind a tractor. Bad idea, since one of the police officers found him with a flashlight and then Mason, and two more officers came. Alan. Why can't you leave me alone? Alan asked Mason angrily. Mason. This doesn't work like that, son, why don't you come over to us, and Mason couldn't continue since Alan threw a fireball at his flashlight and destroyed it and burned his hand a little in the process. Dot. Mason. Enough, catch him, Mason ordered his police officers armed with shotguns and ready to shoot Alan, but the human pyronite hybrid began to burst out in anger with his flames, and the police officers fell wounded to the ground, and upon seeing that, Alan left with Sheriff Mason. To know if they are hurt. Alan. I didn't mean to do it, are you okay? Alan asked Mason and was caught by Gwen in a mono barrier. Uma. Is it just me or do I see double? 
Rainer asked upon seeing Alan in his pyronite form. Kevin. It looks like Inferno. Kevin said. Ben. I already saw it. Ben said. Kevin. Do you want me to kick him in the butt? It will be like old times. Kevin said. I say. If you want it to be like old times, Kevin, why don't I transform into a human gauss or and use you as a punching bag again? I asked Kevin Trelindal. Ben. It will be for another time, I say. Ben said activating his Omnitrix and I did the same. Then he say. It's hero time the two of us said in unison, and we transformed into XLR8 and Turbo Raya. I say XLR8, XLR8 I shouted I eat XLR8. Then Turbo Raya, Turbo Raya Ben shouted like Turbo Raya. Alan. Stay away from me Alan said launching a huge flare towards us, but Ben and I dodged it, and Gwen manifested a mana shield to protect her, Kevin and Rainer. Ben and I grabbed Alan by the arms and legs, but he broke free and fled into the cornfields, and Ben and I chased him, and he tried to attack us with fireballs, but Ben attacked him with laser beams, and I attacked him with fast kicks. And Alan ran away again and Ben chased him, and after that the same play as before was repeated, but this time Alan fell to the ground, crashing and creating a huge hole in the middle of the field, and we found him lying there. Alan. Oh, I don't feel good. Alan said in pain and Ben and I transformed into humans again to talk to Alan. Ben. Enough. Ben asked and Alan nodded. I say. I'll take it as a yes. I said. Ben. There's an older gentleman who has been following you, in a Hawaiian shirt, where is he? Ben asked Alan about Max, but he has no idea what he's talking about. Alan. I don't know what you're talking about. Alan said. Ben. My grandpa, where is he? Ben asked irritably. I say. Ben, I don't think he knows Max's whereabouts, nor does he know who he is. I said to Ben, but Mason and his uniformed agents came to us pointing a flashlight at us. Mason. I knew you couldn't do all that alone, but now I've got you, Alan, and your accomplices. Mason said, accusing us of the crime that the DNAs committed in this episode. I say. Shit I said. Mason. Hands where I can see them Mason said, but Ben and I decided to run, and Mason ordered his men to chase us in the cornfields. Ben. Stop following us, how can I say and I hide with you here? Ben said to Alan. Alan. But I don't know where to go. Alan said. I say. I'll tell you where to go, but now be quiet, the police are coming. I said and we hid among the corn cobs, and we saw Kevin and his car almost hitting Mason and a colleague with his car, and they had to follow him with his car, and the chase ended with a combine harvester blocking the way. Mason. All right, Alan, you and your friends get out of the car now Mason said, but he opened the car window and saw that it was Kevin who was driving the car, and not Alan. Kevin. Is there a problem, agent? Kevin asked Mason, and he and his colleagues saw that there were only Kevin, Gwen and Yuma inside the car, and he proceeded to give the Esmosion a $400 fine for speeding. Back with me, Ben and Alan, we managed to escape from the police and made it to a barn, and hope the officers didn't find us here. They say. They haven't followed us, we're safe. I said. Alan. Why did you help me? Alan asked. Ben. I don't know, you remind me and I say. Ben said. Alan. Yes, I think you're monsters too. Alan said. I say. Technically Ben and I are a lot of monsters, but that's the good part. I said. Alan. There is nothing good about this. Alan said and he dropped some fire on the ground and burned some wheat that was lying here. Ben. Oh, right. Super strength. Flying. Ben said. Alan. I hate flying. Alan said. I say. Yes, you're not good at flying. I said. Alan. Yeah, my powers came in a couple of weeks ago. Alan said. Ben. Are you an alien? Ben asked and Alan showed his human form. Alan. Part alien, my mother is human and I thought she was too until one day I woke up and my bed had fire. My father turned it off and well they explained it to me, she was a plumber Alan said, but I interrupted him. They say. He's an intergalactic policeman, right? I said. Ben. Did your father give you his badge? Ben asked. Alan. Yes, he explained what it was, but Sheriff Mason took it away from me. Alan said. They say. Yes, look, I got it back for you. I said, taking Alan's plumber's license plate out of my pocket, and I gave it to him and explained to Alan about who I was and where I came from. Alan. Amazing, you're from another world, that explains everything. Alan said. Back with Kevin and the girls, Sheriff Mason gave the Esmosion a $400 fine for speeding, and left again to look for me, Ben and Alan. Uma. They're already gone. Rainer said. Kevin. It wasn't that bad, we took them away from Ben and Issei and got this. Kevin said with the fine in his hand. When? Kevin, it's a $400 fine Gwen said when she saw the fine. Kevin. Yes, I know, I think it's a personal record. Kevin said opening the glove compartment and they saw that there were several traffic tickets. Uma. 
I'm surprised that with so many traffic fines they haven't already taken away the driver's license, Kevin Rayner said when she saw the glove compartment full of fines. Heaven. I don't care. Kevin said and started the car engine and headed to the barn where the three of us were. When? Grandpa Max has nothing to do with this, does he? Gwen asked. Heaven. No. Kevin said. Uma. And if that plate belongs to Inferno Boy, where did he find it? Rayner asked about Alan. Heaven. He didn't act like a plumber, maybe he's the son of a plumber. Kevin said. When? Why would a police officer give his badge to his son? Gwen asked. Heaven. Well, so that the plumbers don't arrest you here illegally, a license plate is better than a passport. Kevin said. When? I don't understand anything Kevin. Gwen said. Uma. And neither do I Rayner said. Heaven. Inferno Jr. is probably human, humans with alien ancestors are very common, many of them have powers. Kevin said explaining the situation. When? Common. Gwen asked confused. Kevin. Yes, that's you, you have powers from your grandmother, I thought you knew. Kevin said, and that surprised you Uma. Uma. Wow, maybe that will explain your absorption powers, Kevin. Rayner said and Gwen laughed. Gwen. I have my powers from magical talismans and books. Gwen said and Kevin made fun of that. Kevin. Yes, sure, magic. Kevin said. Uma. Well, at least I don't have alien ancestors, I was born 100% fallen angel, and that's a fact. Rayner said, proud of his fallen angel status. Gwen. Uma, why did you fall, what atrocity did you commit to be a fallen angel? Gwen asked Rayner. Uma. I didn't do anything, I was born like this, okay. Uma said. Heaven. From what you told me in the void, you were born that way because fallen angels can only have children if they fall in love, and that you are like that because of your father. Kevin said. Uma. Okay, I confess everything I am half a fallen angel, my mother was human, and I hate every second of my existence, because of the fallen angel who calls himself my father I never wanted to hurt anyone, especially a say in Asia, I had to follow his orders, or else I would end up murdered like my mother at the hands of that son of a bitch Rainer said, crying for telling Gwen and Kevin what happened to her. Gwen. Yuma, I didn't know that, I can't believe you suffered so much as a child. Gwen said comforting the fallen angel. Yuma. Yes, and back in my world, when I was about to die at the hands of Rhea's Grimory the first time, I told Issei to save me from her, but when I told him he thought I was just saying that to trick him and kill him, but what I said was true, I was afraid of dying and ending up like my mother. Yuma said to Gwen and Kevin. Gwen. Yuma, at least you have a second chance in life to do the right thing and not make the same mistake again. Gwen said to Yuma and she nodded at that, and Kevin parked near the barn, and they got out of the car, and I saw that Rainer was wiping away her tears, who knows what stupid thing she told them. They say. You were late, you know. I said. Kevin. Sorry, we were busy, who's the guy? Kevin asked about Alan and transformed into his pyronite form. They say. This is Alan Albright. I said to Kevin and Ben ripped off a chunk of Alan's skin and complained. Ben. That didn't hurt, I want to show you what Issei and I saw when I was flying over the field. Ben said and started drawing symbols on the ground. They say. It's not exact, but it's something like this, those are not burned paths in the field but circles. I said and they looked at the drawing on the floor. Alan. Like those things that aliens do to land. Alan asked. Kevin. There are more things that farmers leave to deceive. Kevin said. Uma. Yeah, they definitely watch too many alien movies. Rayner said. Ben. We know a lot of aliens. Ben said. Kevin. Right. Kevin said, but Gwen noticed something in the drawing. Gwen. Also, I don't think they're circles, I think they're circuits. Gwen said when she saw the circuits for the DNA's weather tower. We walked out of the barn, and Gwen cast them on the ladder to see that the whole place was covered in circuits. Alan. I wonder how you can do that. Alan said about the monoladder. Gwen. Magic. Gwen said. Kevin. That's not magic. Kevin said and I know he's right that that's not magic, but that's for another episode. Uma. For me, it's magic. Rayner said and Gwen gave her a high five. Gwen. Thanks, Yuma, but Kevin says I have superpowers because of my alien genes. Gwen said. Issei. Well, Kevin won't be that wrong. I said. Alan. You can focus on what's important. Alan said irritably. Kevin. Hey, you don't think this is the important thing. Kevin said pointing to the ground. Yuma. Don't bother him, Kevin, we can all see it. Yuma said and we turned around and saw the cornfield full of symbols, and I know that the Dnalians are responsible. Gwen. Like I said, those aren't circles, they're circuits. Gwen said watching everything the DNAs did. Uma. I think the cornfields are on a giant machine. Rayner said. Ben. Guys, look. Ben said pointing to what seemed to be strange lights, but I know they are DNAs freezing the place with their weapons. Alan. See, I told you it wasn't me. 
Alan said. They say. Let's go see it up close. I said. Alan. Yes, downstairs is okay. Alan said and in his voice I noticed that he is afraid of heights. Already on the ground, we stayed hidden among the corn and we saw the Dnalians in their workers clothing with metal helmets that covered their entire heads and they were freezing everything they saw. Alan. What do you think they're doing? Alan asked, but we made him quiet so they wouldn't discover us. Alan. Sorry. Said Alan and we saw how one of the DNAs made a gesture to his partner to activate the machine that alters the weather and that he did and a huge metal tower arose from the ground and when it was activated, it started to alter the weather and it started to snow. We came out of the corn and saw that it started to snow, and I buttoned my jacket and just like in the Supreme ship, Rainer caught a cold again from wearing short sleeves and sneezed on Alan. Alan. Hey Alan said. Uma. Sorry, the weather affects my nose. Rainer said, shivering with the cold, and then noticed that Kevin brought his hands closer to Alan's flaming head. Alan. Cut the bullshit Alan said somewhat angry. Kevin. Don't be angry, it's just so cold. Kevin said complaining about the cold. And. The tower is a weather machine. Ben said and we heard patrol car sirens and we saw that those who came out were Sheriff Mason and his police officers and they were armed with shotguns. They say. Damn, the one that was missing. I said when I saw Mason. Mason. All right, stop Mason said. Kevin. Nice to see you again. Kevin said. Mason. I wanted to trust you, Alan, out of respect for your parents. You built this machine and stole the heat to fuel your powers. Mason said accusing Alan. Alan. It's not like that Alan was interrupted by a police officer threatening him with a shotgun but Kevin touched it and absorbed the metal of the gun and broke it in half like it was nothing. Mason. He's one of them, they're all geeks Mason shouted. Ben. Calm down. Ben said and then two Sheriff Mason deputies were frozen like statues by a freeze ray from the DNAs and we saw that there were five of them approaching us. Mason. What did you do to my men? Mason asked the DNAs but they didn't respond, and one of the DNAs fired a freeze ray from his weapon, but Gwen protected them with a mana shield, and several more did the same and activated their weapons, and Gwen can't keep several of them away. Stripe. Gwen. Ben, Issei, I can't handle everyone. Gwen said. Issei. Don't worry, Gwen, we're already on it. I said and Ben and I activated our Omnitrix and transformed into Inferno and Muddy respectively. Issei Inferno, Heatlist I screamed like Inferno. Ben Muddy, Muddy Ben shouted like Muddy, and the two of us threw fireballs at the Dnalians, and it knocked them out, and we started fighting against them. Kevin took out two with several hits, Gwen launched bursts of mana towards the aliens, and Raynor launched spears of light at them from the air. Alan dodged two of the Dna's weapons by jumping and kicked them in the chest, and Mason attacked them with his hands and tore the circuitry out of the suit of one of the DNAs. Ben and I grabbed two of them and threw them on their backs to the ground, revealing the face of one of the several minions of the high breed. Ben Muddy, oh no, those aliens are old acquaintances. Ben said. The same Inferno, they're called DNAs, Ben I said to Ben. DNA. Your friend is right, Ben Tennyson, we are the DNAs and we will destroy you all DNA said, threatening to destroy us. Ben Muddy, whatever. Ben said and he hit a right hook to the DNA, and I kicked him in the brainstorm and left him KO. The same Inferno, Kevin, do you remember how cold these guys' ship was? I asked Kevin and he nodded. Uma. Yes and now I know why they do it. The DNAs like cold weather and to create it they do it with this tower. Rainer said. Kevin. That makes sense. Kevin said. Ben Muddy, of course, Kevin, the big secret they have is that they install air conditioning Ben said, but he was frozen from the back by several DNAs that came just now. Gwen. Ben Gwen shouted and she was also frozen by the DNAs, and they also did it with Kevin and Rainer. Mason bent down and punched DNA in the face, but he too was frozen. Now it's just Alan and I left. The same inferno, now it's just us I said, throwing a fireball at the DNAs, and I melted one of their weapons, and just when they hit us with their rays, we didn't turn into statues, since we both became pyronites, and the cold doesn't affect us. The DNA increased the intensity of his weapon to the maximum level and he shot at us, but it didn't affect us at all. Alan. I think we're too hot. Alan said mocking the DNAs. The same inferno, this is not the time to joke, Alan, here's more coming. I said and we watched as Ben burned from inside his prison and freed himself and used power over the plants to retain the DNAs and save me and Alan, while I slapped the DNAs one smack after another. The same inferno thank you Ben. I said to my friend. Alan. You beat them Alan said. Ben Muddy, there's more where they came from. Ben said pointing with his thumb at the weather tower. The same inferno, we need to knock down the weather tower, you and I will take care of these guys, while Ben will try to knock it down like a domino. I said. Alan. I don't know if I'm capable, I'm very bad at flying. Alan said. Then Muddy, yes, I had problems too, but let us say teach you a trick I learned when I was 10. 
Ben said and Alan approached me so I could teach him how to manifest a flying platform, and he's a quick learner, and we got rid of the DNAs that tried to shoot us with their weapons, but we dodged them. We knocked out all the DNAs and Ben knocked down the tower like a domino with all his strength and the DNA's weather tower was destroyed and with his destruction, the cold weather gone too. We approached our frozen friends and thawed them, although I would like to leave Rainer frozen, Ben insisted that I free her, no matter how much I hate her, and we transformed back into humans, Ben and I. Mason. What happened? Mason asked about what happened. I say. Alan wiped out the aliens, destroyed his weather machine and used his fire powers to free everyone. I said to Sheriff Mason. Kevin. We help. Kevin said. Ben. But not much. Ben said and Kevin growled irritably. Uma. Yes, and you defeated them all and you didn't leave a single one for me, how unfair Rainer said irritatedly and Alan returned to his human form. Ben. Would you like to join our team? We can use a power source like yours. There are many to fight against. Ben said to Alan. Mason. No, Alan will be busy helping me with the aliens that appear in our town. Mason said and obviously that's a no. Alan. Still, if you need me, call me. Alan said and we said goodbye to him and we returned to Bellwood, and during the return trip I noticed Rainer seemed disenchanted, but I didn't care about that, I won't let the fallen angel's problems distract me. Uma. Issei, I wish you knew that I never wanted to hurt you, I hope that one day I can tell you the truth about my past. Rainer said in her mind. Ben and Issei met the son of a plumber and had another encounter with the DNAs, and Uma told her past to Gwen and Kevin. See you in the next chapter. Let me know in the comments below if you guys want the next part. Also check out my other video that has been shown and left. Thank you for watching, if you enjoyed this video please like and share this video. And have a fantastic day bye.